involvement uh, with the Geelong West community uh, uh, evolved uh, as a little lad who used to uh, come here to the Geelong West football ground of a Saturday with my grandpa, my lovely Saturday noon, uh, afternoon. Um, pleasure was to come to this ground uh, with my grandpa. Uh, we come up here every Saturday afternoon and and watched Geelong West play in the uh, at that time in the in the district league. Um, I loved sport like uh, most of the people of my age, uh, whether you played cricket or football, and I developed uh, a very strong sense of um, community pride within the Geelong West community, um, uh, and uh, I, I certainly still hold that today. It's been an extremely big part of my, my life um, and uh, I enjoy every minute of uh, coming to this ground now. It has a very special place in my heart, um, uh, mainly because of most of the Geelong West community people played here, a lot of them who, were, who had a big influence on the upbringing of my life. Um, I was uh, born, unfortunately, with a little uh, form of uh, cerebral palsy, so I could not play uh, sport of any great degree. I played cricket uh, for a while, so I had to do what I thought was the next best thing to enjoy uh, uh, football and, and the community uh, here. Some of the personalities that sort of guided my life here were uh, were people who were very involved with the administration of the football club here, going back uh, to the first years when they were in the Geelong Football League and then uh, moving on the club which has had a very dominant football club, very successful. It was formed in 1875 and uh, up until 1975, which was the last premiership, it had won uh, 34 premierships. Uh, and in doing that, uh, the club uh, uh, wanted to be, get into uh, a higher class, a higher standard of football, and therefore it uh, decided to move off uh, from the district league back in the 40s to the Ballarat League in uh, 1948. Uh, then dominating the Ballarat League. Um, uh, in, in, and in 1963, uh, the Ballarat League were not happy with the dominance the club had in the Ballarat League. So it was asked to leave the uh, Ballarat League. And thus, of course, um, was the start of the era, era in uh, in the VFA, and I joined the VFA in 1963. Spent 26 years in the uh, competition, and it was one of the most successful VFA sides in the VFA competition. But besides that is, it helped develop a lot of players. And out of that, of course, it, they wouldn't have got to those uh, successful periods without people like I can remember in my early days as Ernie Barnes, uh, Albert Batty, um, Wally Cox as secretary who was uh, a very dominant factor and one particular person that lives in my mind, he only lived uh, around the corner from where I grew up by the name of Kerry Ryan. He was a real personality, a unique person, probably something like uh, you could describe him as a, as a Lindsay Toolman. He, he, uh, he, he had a great love for this club and uh, one of the things that sort of taught me a, a great deal about loyalty is that my, where I worked at the Returned Soldiers Woolen Mill, um, my boss was very good friends with the name of Kerry Ryan and he said to me one day, come on kid, he said, I knew, of course, naturally they knew where I worked, that I was a very 
West person. Uh, so he um, said, we're going for a drive. So off we went. Uh, I thought, God, the boss has taken me for a drive. I'm supposed to be working. And uh, we headed down at Shannon Avenue and we turned into the West Oval and I thought, oh, this is interesting. So he said, I'm going here. He said, I'm going to see a mate of mine. And I thought, oh, yeah. Well. So we, and he said, his name's Kerry Ryan. And I thought, oh, this is going to be quite interesting. So we get over into the old grandstand there, which is um, another history lesson because the bluestone pictures that are in the stand are uh, the stone which was uh, removed from the old uh, West Town Hall and used to build the, the grandstand. Anyway, we get in there and here's Kerry, he's got his red and, red and white paint and the tin and so forth and Buzz says to him, what are you doing over here, you silly old buggy? You're always here. He said, well, the club's always struggling for money. So he's, he said, I've got to help it. But he said, well, you should be working. And he said, oh, and of course, Kerry was a shearer's uh, cook and he had time off. So he said, I've had time off from cooking in the shearing shed. So he said, I'd come over here and work and help the club out by painting the inside of the rooms. It might not seem a big thing. It might not seem a big thing to people, but to me, it it sort of impressed me of, about loyalty. That sort of uh, definite loyalty that we we've had in in West Geelong, and that that's a sort of example that taught me a lot about loyalty and and to to the community as 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 such. But always in West because we were a close knit community is that and things were always tough. We always learnt to help each another, develop and and care for each another. It was always a community of a sense of belonging which developed this sort of uniqueness which brushed off on, on the football club. We're all in 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 saying that we're all sort of one big family within the, in the community and a lot of that sort of uh, emanated from the, the football club and it developed that sort of well-being and belonging within itself. I, I, I'm a course, uh, oh, not a course, but I'm a life member of uh, Geelong Football Club. Um, I spent uh, 25 years there and Ultimately, he was head trainer of the uh, reserves, um, and being at that club, I met some wonderful people. Although uh, Geelong Football Club wasn't the love of my life, um, the love of my life was this West Oval and, and will always be. But whilst at uh, Geelong Football Club, I got to know some of the personalities like Polly Farmer. I know I had a lot to do with Paul, um, and I could tell quite a few stories about Paul. But of course, his other mate, um, Billy Goggin, and I suppose we're sort of similar in our um, needs in life and, uh, and live a very simple life. Uh, but I've become very close to um, not only those two, but another person who I love very much in Neil Tresai's uh, Nipper was probably my very, very closest friend and, and we stopped as friends until even the time when he passed away. But I always had a, a respect for Billy Goggin because of his dedication to sport, his uh, tenacity in playing football. And I remember one period of time um, when uh, the head trainer was away from the, uh, the first and I was asked to come up and, uh, from the reserves and help out. And on this occasion, Billy Goggin had had an ankle injury and uh, they'd sent him away up Queensland uh, for a week or so to try and get him to rest and so forth. He came back and I was in the head trainer's room and uh, Dr Trelfel said to me, Kevin, will you pop out and get Billy Goggin? And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and Billy was hiding behind the, the lockers. 
<laughs> and I stuck my head around the room and I said, Bill, yes, Kevin, don't worry. Tell him, go back and tell him I'm all right. <laughs> I went back to Dr. Trelfland and I said, he's all right. He, he told me he's all right, Kevin. And he said, oh, I'm all right. And so there was nothing uh, said about that anymore. However, little did I know that he was going to come eventually here to Geelong West to uh, coach and I was so pleased uh, when they appointed him coach here at West. And uh, he, he, to me, was one of the most successful coaches that, well, without doubt he, he was the successful coach here at, at West. Uh, and not only here, he of course went on to other areas to uh, uh, show his skills with with, the, with those clubs, but he was there, without doubt the best uh, best coach that uh, Geelong West had ever produced, and uh, his only premiership success was 1975, and I know that lives in Bill's heart as his number one. Uh, of success that he had in, in football. And like Bill, like myself, um, uh, as I said before, it, it's got a special place in our heart. We've had many wonderful days here, but it just means so much to us. Um, that's why Bill still, even today, uh, gives uh, as much as he can towards this club to help it succeed. Um, and, and in those days, of course, the VFA was so prominent within the Geelong um, community and as some of the interviews have said, we've had very, very large crowds that used to come along here and they enjoyed their days out. The Sunday afternoons was so important to the well-being of the people to have some happiness and even today, <coughs> today even in the year 2016, a lot of, there are a lot of people who still talk about the days at the West Oval and Billy Goggins' team of 1975 that were, were premiers and of course the 72 side uh, which they were champions. And fortunately enough, I was, um, in 1972, I was mayor of the city of Geelong West and uh, I had the delight in uh, entertaining uh, the successful uh, 1972 Premiership side, uh, which is, was a highlight of, um, of my term as uh, two years as the Mayor of the City of Geelong which, uh, West, uh, which council I served for about, I uh, oh, served for 25 years uh, giving back to the community. Um, of course, uh, I remember the times when the amalgamation of councils was uh, to the forefront and um, I, of course uh, I was one of those leaders that had to fight to retain the city of Geelong West and of course uh, the editorials, the advertiser would never, um, would only support the amalgamation of councils and I remember an editorial that appeared in the Geelong Advertiser, which I, I was very intrigued and delighted to uh, read, was that the editorial referred to those Geelong West uh, people of the strange people, the strange community of the Geelong area. So, you know, uh, the club uh, has struggled for it, been through many crises. Uh, the periods that we've had here haven't been very pleasant at, at times, but I think it is, even at the moment we've, we've, there are a lot of issues that have to be decided upon. Football itself has changed like many other aspects in, in life, but I always feel down in my heart because of the uh, tradition, the culture that this club has developed out of the earlier periods of its existence, the Geelong West community, that the club will survive and still continue on to find its way in life in, 
particularly the football life uh, of uh, so it's not not being easy for, and it's not easy in, in in any football club now to survive uh, particularly in uh, country football or the lower levels of football but uh, I'm, I'm I'm very pleased to be still able to come here and enjoy this oval and uh, the history, particularly the history of the club, which has been up and down. I mean, I suppose, you, you, no doubt, you, you could probably refer to this club as the Nomad Club of uh, Geelong, where it wandered off into other leagues and then had to come home. I suppose the saying is that the chickens had to come home to roost, which has, has happened. Oh, the, the best players I've seen, and I've, you know, I've seen a lot, a lot of players play here, right from the Ballarat League, um, the VFA, and back into the District League. Of course, uh, you have to admit that uh, the VFA competition was certainly an outstanding competition. I know. Uh, yeah, the best player I, I would say would be uh, Joe Redodjevic. Uh, any doubt. Um, then the uh, marvellous sentiment, Tony, and um, to you, Tony, I wish you well. Um, I know you, you've had a bit of a sickness problem at the moment. However, I'm sure that you'll uh, do your best to fight off those elements. We had our days at Geelong Football Club. I remember them well. You used to bandage your uh, knees, do all the strapping, and I'm sure you You'll re remember me as, as a good friend, and probably is, um, you'd understand uh, the best recruiter for Geelong West Football Club that you had at, in, inside the house of Geelong Football Club. Uh, you're a beautiful player to, to watch, uh, uh, Tony. I mean, you get all these unique players, but some are more outstanding um, than others. The other player that uh, came here, who I had a lot to do with at uh, Geelong Football Club, was Ian Williams. I remember um, he was on my table one day. He, um, I was strapping him up and he, he said to me, Kev, um, I'm still struggling here at Geelong to get, uh, to beat, get the centre position off Alistair Lord. And uh, so he said, I've had an offer to go to West Geelong. I said, well, Ian, go, mate. And he came here and he was an excellent uh, centre man. Different to Tony. Tony has a, a, a real bit of charisma about him as to how he played. Ian was a more direct player and uh, had a good left-hand turn. However, he finished up winning Ian um, Williams to the medal in the uh, second division. Uh, I can't remember the name of the, the medal. Anyway, he he was an excellent player. Uh, many of the others, uh, most of them were on a sort of uh, level balanced area. Many of the players. So yeah, that was the, the success of the Geelong West Football Club and, and that's the name of the game, isn't it? Football, to be able to play as a, as a team. They were just uh, so well balanced and that's why, in my opinion, they had so much success over a long period of time. But, you know, um, I don't think he could beat Joe. You know, I had some time with Joe at Geelong Football Club. He got a bit of a rough deal at Geelong Football Club as did uh, Tony, and without doubt, they should have played uh, many more games of, of uh, VFL football as it was in those days. I, I, the history of the club, uh, we're really indebted to uh, David Bullock for his... Uh, oh, it's been amazing what he's done in terms of these uh, media videos that he's done for all of these players. and. I, uh, I'm just absolutely speechless, as is most of the chaps who have had interviews done. And um, I just personally, and I'm sure on behalf of everybody, David, I'd like to thank you. But uh, you're, not, you're certainly helping to retain the history of the club for now 
in, in, into the distant uh, future. This club to me means uh, probably the biggest part of my life. Um, and, and, and the friends and people that I've met within, the, uh, within our community, the Geelong West community, I'm very, I feel myself very fortunate that I'm able to walk around anywhere in those areas and know that the Geelong West community has uh, the ability to be able to stick together and uh, help one another. It, it does that without any shadow of doubt. And then again, it's that culture, that unique culture that we we have, and you can see it through all the interviews that David's done. That uh, the sort of loyalty and respect that's built up over a period of many, many years, and and only history does that. Here, yeah, it's there. And uh, this Geelong West Oval has an, has an enormous amount of history here. I mean, Russell Mockridge used to ride here. Hubert, I remember, was here. All Olympic game cyclists, people. You have, as I mentioned, the uh, grandstand up there, which was shifted in 1928. The stone to build that grandstand. You've got the Archibald uh, Prize, uh, the name, uh, the Archibald Prize is named after a person who was uh, born and read on the corner of, of the Oval. And then you've got the first original um, uh, St Pat's School, which is, was built in the corner here of the uh, West Oval. So it has a unique history, not only for football, but as a community area where people can be involved in sport. So I, I, it's a place that I will always be until the day I've, I've uh, gone. And uh, I'm, I'm extremely thankful to David because uh, uh, some of this will not be brought about only through his enormous efforts to uh, do these episodes, which I know everybody's enjoying and will continue to enjoy. You've given your heart to get here And your soul to get it right You can take them boots and all oh, But it's sure gonna take a fight When you spend all week getting to your peak You're gonna have your say You bet On Sunday It's the BFA It's Sunday for the BFA It's Sunday